Well, it's time for the JMT Monoposto Mono 1800, 1600, 1400 and Moto 1000 cars for their second race of the weekend. It's going to be a 50 minuter and it is Jeremy Timms who starts in pole position alongside him is Andrew Gordon Colebrook. Then the second row of the grid is Craig Curran and Dan Levy. Row three is Martin Wright and Peter Lake. Row four, Jonathan Reed and George Fowler. Row five, William Thorling and Jeff Fern. Row six, Peter O'Regan and Lucy Wardrop. Row seven, Douglas McClay and Adam Fathers. Row eight of the grid, David Jones and Simon Price. And the ninth row, Simon Hare and Anthony Gortler. Thank you very much from myself, Ben Evans, for joining us on this Race TV live afternoon here from the Brands Hatch Indy circuit and an absolutely jam-packed most vision racing event the GMT on the Boston Championship completely be relied upon to give us some very full grids and some very close racing. This is the small capacity of cars, some of the Moto Mono cars absolutely flying. Yesterday's race was claimed by Jeremy Timms from Jason Timms and Craig Curran. Therefore, you get a sense of the way that this race is going to unfold. Jeremy Timms in the pole position, but he is going to be very challenging to overhaul, but you never know what is going to happen over the course of this 50-minute race, particularly as some of the Moto Mono cars very, very highly tuned very specialised pieces of racing machinery. Unfortunately, we do get the odd mechanical failure that occurs along the way. So there is the dark and white car of Jeremy Timms alongside on the front row of the grid. Andrew Gordon Colebrook in his Dallara. That is another black entry in this one by one starting grid. Then in third place, Craig Curran. He is one of several Formula Jedi entered runners in the Moto 1000 class, including Dan Levy to the outside of row two as well. The last couple of cars coming into position largely because we've got one or two gaps at the back of the grid. So they will just need to find the right place to roll to a halt, which they uh, have just about done. We've got yeah, a couple of cars more or less in the right place so we're going to go green and unless the five second board is shown to the drivers the red lights come on now the jmt monoposto championship about to get underway here at brands hatch and the way we go is a brilliant start from third on the grid from craig Curran and also dan levy well away to the jedis as you'd expect rocketing off the line and they make up the first three places as they run downhill Jonathan Reed it is who goes second Levy into third and pulses Jeremy Timms was demoted to fourth he is already looking to fight back and gain some ground as they run downhill towards Graham Hill Ben Levy can't dispute it too much he finds the traction around the outside Jonathan Reed giving Craig Curran the chance to break through at the front of the back as Levy now to challenge Reed and Timms frustrated to be pulled up by the Jallows in this early running. Craig Curran is the big beneficiary. He has been able to build an absolutely monumental advantage at the end of this first lap of the race. In the region of 1.7 seconds. Jeremy Timms now looks to challenge into Paddock Hill Bend and he's going to clear both cars in one fell swoop. He bade his time, waited for the right moment, was able to jink past. I suspect it's only going to be a matter of time as well before Gordon Colbrook looks to do much the same thing. But for the time being, Andrew Gordon Colbrook, qualified in second place, has to content himself to follow behind John Green and Dan Levy. Levy finding a way up clear of the chair based driver, John Reed. by Andrew Gordon Colbrook. While in front of the field, Craig Curran is about to be caught. By Jeremy Timms, so the race leader, his time at the front of the field, one would suspect is likely to be slightly limited. Gordon Colbrook, clear Jonathan Reed, his next target is Dan Levy. Here come the race leaders. Hurran leaves plenty of space, and Jeremy Timms able to dart to the inside and gain the place. It was only taken him two and a quarter laps or thereabouts to move up to the front of the field. Now, 
the smart money is going to be on Jeremy Timms, Rob Pink clear for the course. It's such a varied field. In 1800, 1600 moto, 1400 moto, one meter classes. You do get a lot of traffic, and that traffic starts to go into play fairly early on. Second place they're coming together as Dan Levy. Just to close up onto turns with Craig Hunt. They've got Andrew Gordon Colebrook as well tucked up behind them. And then a the big gap in the traffic back to the next group of cars. Jonathan Reed and then Lake in sixth position. Clear of Anthony Gortner, they're currently fighting over eighth and ninth place. We've also got quite a few of the Sinsep here of the boards in the field as well. They're mainly to be found in the 1800 class. There's Martin Wright who looks to close up onto the tail of Peter Lake. Lake in one of the Spence cars, which used to be very well represented in the Monoposto Championship. Here comes the pass then. Alongside and the moves clear of George Fowler. Fowler though still comfortably leading the 1800 class, which is also open to uh, more than 2000 cars. That place gained for Gauntlet. His next target right is some 3.7 seconds up the road, so that isn't going to be the work of a moment to close down. Meanwhile, John Hare is trying to chase down the car of Adam Fathers, car five, having a good scrap. They are also racing with Simon Proust and about to walk back by the race leader, Jeremy Timms. Now, this is the key for Timms, is managing the traffic. That said, his lead over Craig Curran is gigantic. The battle, though, for second and third, about to arrive into Graham Hill Bend very, very close between Horan, Levy, and also Gordon Colebrook. Likewise, now he's got a bit of wind into his sails. Seeing some great progress through the field from Anthony Gauntlet in the Dallara. Here's the battle for second then. It's the all-black car of Craig Curran. He's got the black and orange car of Daniel Levy just behind him. They pick their way past the 1600 entries. Head towards Panic Hill Bend, Andrew Gordon Colbrook, all part of this fight, second, third and fourth, up for dispute as they climb uphill towards Druids, round the right-hander and then down towards Graham Hill Bend, and Levy thought he'd got a run there for a moment on Craig Curran, they've got a few moments actually before they come up to catch Philip Davis, who is their next target, there's Davis. Craig Curran, though, taking no chances, moves across cover the inside line. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary risks. Just a moment, we've got one car in trouble. It's one of the Mono 1600s, whose number is just obscured behind the wheel. Nonetheless, well, they're not up and running, but they are into a place of safety. Here comes the fight for second. Now, is that going to provoke the yellow flag for some Druids? the Aaron Carr. Meanwhile, in amongst the traffic now for Craig Curran and Dan Levy, they have to be fairly ruthless, scything past David Jones in his 1982 Van Diemen for the 4-2000 car. Type of chassis that took Edson Sennett to that year's European for the 4-2000 championship title, of course, as now we've got Levy released to challenge Craig Curran. They've got the benefit of having just broken away from Andrew Gordon Colebrook. Eight and a half minutes left in the race. So they arrive in towards Paddock Hill Bend. Here is our race leader, Jeremy Timms. Timms seven seconds up on the rest of the field now. And just beginning to a, be able to pick his way past some of the traffic at will. Tim swings through the never-ending right-hander, which is 
clearways into Clark Curve. Fun to wear around William Thorling. And also Martin Wright then concludes his ninth lap of the race. Despite all that traffic, that was still a very impressive lap from Jeremy Timms. A little bit more traffic to contend with in the form of Jeff Byrne. And Fern also having a very solid race. He is currently in ninth position. This gives you an indication of Jeremy Timms' pace that he has lapped so much of the field. Well, there is the 71 car of Andrew Gordon Colebrook. Here is Craig Curran with Dan Levy snapping his heels. And Gordon Colebrook's been well and truly dropped by the two Jedis who are really busy disputing the second place. Great battle between the pair of them. Swing through Surtees and the Jedi chassis, originally developed by John Corbin as a hill climbing car back in the late 1980s, but then it's proved to be a very popular circuit racing car as well as the, the thriving Formula Jedi Championship, but then you'll also see many examples coming to compete here in other series. John Gauntlet, meanwhile, makes further progress through the field. He now goes into fifth place with that move on Jonathan Reed. But for a better start, Gordon could have really been in a position to challenge for a podium. He still might, except he's now 14 seconds adrift of Andrew Gordon Colebrook. That feels like, despite the pace that Gordon is demonstrating, that might just be a little bit too much for him to achieve. That's he was one and a half seconds up on Gordon Colebrook last time around, but with just six minutes to go, that's not really going to be anything like enough. There's Jonathan Reed who had such an electrifying start to the race, but now probably settled back more into his natural order. Glimpse of David Jones. Glimpse as well of Philip Davis in Van Diemen RF 98. It's probably worth mentioning that whilst Formula 4 2000s as a category in the United Kingdom faded really in the late 1980s as a spin and around goes Lucy Wardrup. Wardrup, one of just two female racers to have finished on the podium at the Formula Ford Festival here at Brands Hatch. The other, of course, being Danica Patrick. Unfortunately, that all went a little bit wrong at Druid. Shows how hard she was pushing. She was in 11th place at that point and leading her class as well. Another car in a little bit of trouble. That's Petro Reagan. Peter pulls off the road. That's just on the extra Surtees. It's in the middle of the grass. I don't think he's going to be causing too much concern in terms of the intervention of a safety car. So we head to the final third of the race. Still the best battle has beaten this one for second and third place. It's Jeremy Timms who leads. Second place is Craig Curran. Third, Daniel Levy. Fourth, Andrew Gordon, Gordon Colbrook. Fifth, John Gortland. Sixth place is Jonathan Reed. Seventh place is leg eighth place foul and ninth for Thorling and tenth is Fern. Dan Levy having tried pretty much everything hasn't been able to find a way past Craig Curran just yet. Curran ruthless as he needs to be through the traffic and with cars of so many differing speeds and characteristics around the circuit you really do have to be very confident in your fellow competitors and Simon Hare has proved to be a little bit tricky for Dan Levy to put a lap on. Hare sporting the novice cross on the rear of the car, which suggests that he has got very limited circuit racing experience. And what that has served to do is give Craig Curran what could turn into potentially a decisive advantage in the fight for second and third place. It also brings Andrew Gordon Colebrook possibly back into contention for third. We've got another car in trouble on the Brabham Strait. Martin Wright, where something has gone very wrong as he pulls off just beyond the start and finish gantry. I'll say that because again he requires a little bit of retrieval. So there is Levy. Here is our race leader, Jeremy Timms. Timms on his 15th lap has got just over three minutes left in the race. through the traffic and this has been a very comfortable performance from Jeremy Timms having taken the lead in the fairly early running. Lead 
over Cray Curran is absolutely gigantic. Curran only comes past us now, some 18.1 seconds back. And Curran, 1.6 seconds clear of Levy, but in clear air, Dan Levy a little bit quicker than Cray Curran. So still the fight for second, third and fourth is unresolved. Get the feeling that barring disaster, the battle for the win is pretty much settled in favour of Jeremy Timms. Timms about to put the lap on Jonathan Reed. Reed currently in fifth position. In a way, it's turned into a slightly lonely fifth position for Reed. Now, here is Levy. Here is Andrew Gordon Colbert. This is the fight for third and fourth place. And both of them last time around were catching Craig Curran in second position. Craig a little bit clearer of them still as they swoop across the line with exactly two minutes remaining. We've got, unfortunately, Simon Hare off the road and into the gravel trap. He's OK, just extremely disappointed. And those wave yellow flags at Druids give Dan Levy a momentary respite from a potential challenge from Andrew Gordon Colebrook. So we're rapidly veering towards the closing stages of this race. All the way through the field, Adam Fathers. He's with the Ford, right in the thick of the action. Currently in 18th place as Jeremy Timms looking one way then the other to try and uh, pick his way past Simon Pruce. Now is Timms going to get the checkered flag on this occasion? Just, under, just about a minute left on the clock and we have seen some of the races this afternoon we received the check of flag with a couple of seconds remaining just being mindful of being up against curfew but no jeremy timms gets the last lap board on this occasion and in fact the red flag comes out so the race has been stopped early and the reason for that i can only surmise ah there we go is two cars that have become entangled next to Paddock Hill Bend. One of them looks like Peter Laig in the speds. Indeed it is. And the other was Peter O'Regan. Peter Laig moving around in the cockpit. The car doesn't appear to be too badly damaged. It's just unfortunate that where the cars have been positioned on the track leaves there to be no option but to, to throw the red flag. It gives us a provisional classification, therefore, of a race of victory for Jeremy Timms. Second place for Craig Curran. Third was Daniel Levy. Fourth was Drew Gordon Colebrook. In fifth place, Jonathan Reed. Sixth place is going to be, would have been Peter Lake, but it's not. It's going to be bumped up as a result instead to Fowler. In seventh place, then Thorling. Eighth place, Fern. Ninth place, McClay. Lucy Wardrop completing the top 10. But as I say, very provisional classification. So we will expect find out, depending on who presents themselves at the podium. Certainly there is no disputing that it's a win for Jeremy Timms and second place for Craig Curran with third place for Daniel Levy. So a slightly unfortunate GMT Monoposto 1800, 1600, Moto 1400 and Moto 1000 race in that it was a bit more attritional than we would have liked but nonetheless we were treated as ever to some excellent dicing throughout the pack the drivers will very shortly be heading up to the podium and to join Michelle Livings so let's have a look then at the moment that brought the race to a halt and just unfortunate there, Peter Lake was looking to try and find a way past Peter O'Regan. I'm not sure that O'Regan quite appreciated the speds was going to dart up the inside. As a result, the pair of them coming into contact. Damage to the rear suspension of Peter Lake's car to the front suspension of Peter O'Regan. That was just an unfortunate racing incident. Hopefully they will both be back in action very soon in the JMT Monoposto Championship as we can head towards the podium now. And the driver's about to come out onto the rostrum and then we will be able to hear from Michelle Livings who will be able to talk to our winning drivers. So in into third place, Daniel Levy receives the handshake and the bubbly. Our runner-up, a great drive from Craig Curran who was under a lot of pressure. 
and he gives the thumbs up and receives the champagne and the race winner Jeremy Timms who's barely put a wheel wrong all weekend and he is up on to the top step of the rostrum three very happy drivers at the end of a long weekend racing I think they are going to make merry with the MSVR bubbly and uh, as ever with the MSVR bubbly, believe that uh, Belarus has got an excellent 2016 vintage and therefore that gets uh, sprayed on the rostrum. Three hot, sweaty and happy drivers. Right now, live with Race TV on the podium in the sunshine here at Brands Hatch with our three winners from the Monoposto race. First of all, Jeremy, coming to you, which uh, is wearing the first hat, obviously. Um, after a little bit of a hiccup at the start, it worked out pretty well for you in the end, didn't it? It did, yeah. Um, it was, a, as I said earlier, the start's a very awkward start. It's on a slope and the back end slipped down and took off. And then they, the, the three Jedi, the Jedis are so quick off the line. They're lightning. And, and, uh, but it gave, it gave me something to do earlier on in the race. And, and it was it was good, good fun getting by them, yeah. yeah. Gave, you, gave you something to do, didn't it, Jeremy? I mean, what else are you going to do out there? Well, it, the, the, the most interesting part of it is overtaking some tailenders because they just do not see you and I had a couple of very close shades where I second-guessed them and uh, managed to get through to them, through them. Yeah, yeah, but um, no, it was, a, it was a good race and, and no problems all the way through. Yeah. Excellent. Well, well done. Let me just uh, squeeze past and, and speak to these two chaps here. So we've got Craig and Dan. Well, yeah, Craig, Craig and Dan. I know, I know, I've got it all covered. Uh, so you two were having, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty good battle between the two of you, wasn't it? It was a pretty intense battle, yeah. A very tiring battle. <laughs> You're a bit exhausted. I'm very exhausted. It's been, it's been a long weekend. But I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, it was close racing, but it was, it was you know, it was clean and fair. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. It's just very tiring having to keep looking in your mirrors all the time. <laughs> You, you've exhausted him, Dan. That was intentional. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I knew he'd be getting tired. I thought I'd wear him down. Just didn't wear him down enough, really. So next time, I'll try and wear him down a bit more. Get yeah. Brilliant. So. But also, all in all, you're both happy with the, you know, the, the results? Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's a great weekend. Yeah, tough road, but you can't complain. Exactly. The sun's out as well. I mean, what more could we want? Thank you so much, guys. I'll let you leave. Careful you don't slip over on all your celebration. <laughs> as we'll call it. So there you go, that was the podium for the Monoposto.